kind of priorities today? And I'm interested, you know, through ex your experience as an assistant, kind of um, how did all of that kind of develop into your, your approach going into today, your first day of training? Well, you kind of mirror some of the things that you've done in the past um, as far as laying your foundation. Because uh, day one is a lot of teaching. Uh, these first few practices, in, in fact, are going to be quite a bit of uh, foundational pieces. Some of the things that, uh, just even the verbiage, you know, where guys understand this is our terminology, this is what we're looking for in these, these scenarios, um, and, and just laying your concepts. Uh, so it takes, you know, months at times to, to, for everybody to get up to speed. Because uh, right now it's easy. It's, you know, it's a three-man drill. It's a drill versus coaches. It's five on O. Oh. Now, you know, once you start playing live, you know, the speed of it, you know, the competition, your adrenaline gets going. Sometimes that gets lost. So just making sure everyone's on the same page, guys uh, understand their responsibilities in, in, as far as what the coverage may be or in certain situations is important. And uh, just kind of how much of that day is um, devoted to defense, <laughs> bringing it, you know, your reputation of, being defensive, but like also, like, just what, what is that? How, how, does, how did you see that today? Well, I'll say this. I mean, I know I'm, I've been given a lot of credit for, you know, some of the defensive things we did in Denver. Um, that was my department in that, you know, in, in that role. Uh, but I kind of look at myself as just an all around coach. But the, uh, there was a heavy emphasis this morning. Uh, if I had to guess, it was 80 20 defense to offense. Uh, and when it goes back to the previous question, it was a lot of foundational things where, the sooner we can grasp these things and guys understand their responsibilities, I think we'll be better for it down the line. With your personality, you know, in terms of your adapted, like you can't drop nickel or as much, that sort of thing. I guess just how, how do you see this group of defenders? Uh, are they uh, like multiple in what you guys wanted to do? Is it do you have an idea of like one certain style you want to do? I know you're not going to do the game plan, but right. No, I mean, I think simple and consistent. Um, and, you know, I think we'll start that way in everything we do. And then once we get that under our, under our belts, we'll incrementally add different, uh, different scenarios, different coverages, some nuanced things that can, you know, go to as adjustments. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wes, um, uh, you spoke, I think, to us last week about kind of being malleable and everything like that. Obviously, with Rudy being out for kind of an unknown period of time, how does that change the calculus with um, – what you're able to do with the guys, what you want to do, obviously, with when you're starting to kind of form who might be your starting lineup, what do you have to kind of work around now that you don't have him? It doesn't change us, uh, you know, a whole lot. Obviously, you know, he's, he's a big piece of what we want to do going forward, but um, we have the flexibility with our depth. So we have multiple guys who can play that position. Um, and it gives maybe us uh, a different look on, on the offensive end where we have uh, just on adding another shooter onto the floor. So I don't look at it as, um, you know, it's a bad thing necessarily. It's, it's, it's unfortunate he's not here. He's not with us, but it also gives them, you know, opportunity for some other guys to get on the floor and show us what they have. And you obviously have seen all these guys come through Denver and everything like that, but specifically about um, Kuzma, who's played just a ton of different roles in, in a short career pretty much. What have you learned about him since you've gotten to see him in person? The one thing that uh, probably would stand out, his ability to play make. Um, I think you take it for granted, obviously, in the situation he was in, wasn't given that opportunity as much, um, but he has the ability. Um, and I think you, you couple him with Denny, um, you know, some of the other big wings who can put it down and be secondary ball handlers, secondary playmakers. That bodes once again for our flexibility um, and ability to stretch stretch the defense, um, add shooting, um, but puts a lot of pressure on your defense when you got that many guys who can make plays. Wes, is there an equivalent to early two-point shots in the shot clock on defense that you just want to get out? Do you want to eliminate on the defensive side? As far as enforcing our opponents into those shots? Yeah, or? things that you want to – things that defensively are bad things to do. Oh, well, yeah, I think, you know, um, when it goes back to being simple and consistent, um, we don't want to be a gambling team. We want to be aggressive. We want to make sure we're being aggressive with the proper technique. And, and I think, you know, you look back at some of the numbers, you don't want to dive too deep into last year because it is a different team. But, uh, you know, the foul rate, you know, opponent free throw attempts, want to get that number down. Some of that, you know, whether it's schematics, is that just a, the lack of understanding of personnel or is it just the lack of discipline? Not sure, but that's an area we can control. But the closeouts on shooters, um, I know the league is going to try to de-emphasize those kind of leaning threes sure, and going sure. fouls, but how do you approach closing out, especially in a league where everybody's looking to 
expect to spread the floor and shoot a ton of three. Right. Well, I think, you know, the way we guard pick and rolls, you get exposed a little bit. Um, the volume of threes, there may be a small uptick in that area. It's just what can we do to reduce the percentage? We can't say, hey, we're going to stop teams from shooting. You know, if guys want to come across half court and heave it, there's nothing we can do. Um, but how do you put those shooters under duress? Uh, to your point, it's the closeouts. It's running running guys off. Some of those are, are small, detailed things you can improve, on, improve upon, but it boils down to the effort because it's not always going to be black and white. And it's not always going to just be perfect. You know, there's, there are going to be breakdowns. So, you know, what do you do after that? You know, you have to fly around, get multiple effort, and at worst, to get a late contest. Hey, Wes, Brad was talking about expanding his three-point range. I'm curious to know what you think about long threes. Mm -hmm. Davis is a guy that mm -hmm. has a green light as soon as he crossed half court. What are your thoughts on the philosophy offensively of shooting from range like that? I mean, that, that's a shot he works on, shot that, you know, uh, he makes at a high rate. Uh, he's shown that he can be inefficient in that shot. I have no problem with it. You know, I think there are other guys around the league have proven. Um, you see some of these guys in the playoffs. Um, and then Dame Lillard sticks out. We just, you know, haven't, haven't played him in the West. Um, probably going to get the stat wrong, but he was in the mid to high 30s shooting from 30 plus feet. That's not bad. Uh, you know, it's not probably a shot that they want to live with all the time, but he's certainly capable of making it. And at, at times, those are momentum plays. They're backbreakers for, for the defense. So I think it's, it's just the, the repetition. Guys understand that, you know, he may have a license to take that shot, but is he, is he efficient in that area? I've never asked you this. I'm curious. What's the first thing you look at on the stat sheet, either at halftime or after a game? I guess it depends on the flow of the game. I don't know if it's one metric that really sticks out. You know, you know years ago, it was just the uh, – you, where were you were, where were you with the uh, field goal percentage defense? And I think that's shifted – the mindset has shifted with that because now it's defensive efficiency. And you're not going to necessarily see that right away on the uh, on a box score. Wes, how did you map out what you want to get done for this first week of training? Do you have like a calendar day by day where you're like, hey, here's what we're going to get done today? Like, I know you're so meticulous in your planning. What's the what was your strategy going into? It's not necessarily mapped out day to day or practice to practice. It's more that these are checklist items. So there's a, like a three page checklist on offense, three page checklist on defense. And as we get through the week, we'll, it will kind of take a life of its own. If we're able to add a few things, you know, throughout the week, then so be it. If there's things we need to take our time with, or we really need to hone in and, and walk through these things, uh, make sure there's understanding across the board. It may take a day or two to get done. So we're not in a hurry, but we want to make sure there's complete understanding, there's complete synergy on the floor before we move on. This is high tell. <laughs> With um, wanting to keep things simple defensively, how, how do you see uh, Daniel Gafford fitting into that? And just what is kind of your expectations with him? Well, just his uh, innate ability to change shots at the rim. Um, I think it's, a, it's an incredible dynamic to have. Um, he's got the versatility, the athleticism to be in a stance, impact the ball at the point, but then also make plays, you know, late. Uh, so it's a weapon that, you know, I'm not, honestly not used to having. So having that is, is uh, gives me an incredible advantage, but also a degree of comfort. Because once again, your defense isn't going to be perfect. Um, there's going to be mistakes. And if you have someone, you know, whether it's through multiple effort or a guy who can change shots late, gives you a, you know, a secondary line of defense. Just following up on that. Uh, last year with him specifically, there was a, whether he could play 30 minutes a game because of the foul rate, conditioning, whatever factors. I, I guess just where do you see that for him? Is he a guy capable of playing consistently and, and high level minutes as well? I hope so. <laughs> Honestly, it's not it's not something I've seen. Um, I wasn't here last year, so it's tough to say. And I know he's talked about it, his, his lack of conditioning, but you know, that was a year ago. So you hope that he's learned from that. He's put his, himself in a better situation. Physically, he's, he's in a better place um, and he looks great. So. Um, time will tell, but I think he's certainly capable of doing that. Anybody limited or uh, didn't participate today? Besides you? No, I mean, you know, Spencer, we're going to be cautious with. Um, obviously, TB, you know, is limited as far as what he can do, but for the most part, everyone's, uh, everyone's a go. And uh, this team acquired some players uh, with pretty good defensive reputations that came from really good defensive programs, uh, you know, Aaron Holiday, KCP, guys like that. 
Um, what has kind of stood out to you so far, kind of like the level that they're already at, mm -hmm. to the concepts that they understand? It? Like, is it a good, pretty good starting point? Defensively? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think there's a pretty good baseline of understanding uh, already. The only difference really is, you know, uh, the terminology. So and that's the biggest thing. And that's the thing that takes probably the most, most time. We all have different terms for the similar actions. But just so now we've, everyone's on the same page, that, that covers up a lot of mistakes. All right, we're going to go over to the Zoom. Um, Kareem. Hey, Wes, Kareem Kofman from the Washington Post. Um, I've got one more on Daniel for you. You know, yesterday he talked a lot about his, you know, motivations and how he talked approached off season, things like that. And um, I'm just curious, you know, what, what has stood out or what have you noticed so far about his mental approach? Cause he seems pretty confident right now and seems like he's a hungry guy to kind of, um, you know, take the next step in his career. Right. No, you know, it's funny cause he's, uh, he's very quiet. So sometimes those quiet guys are tough to gauge, but uh the, that that air of confidence, I love. Um, you know, he's going to play at his at his own speed, at his own pace. Um, he's going to play hard, but he, it's not a bravado where he's you know, you know, talking or you know, being reckless. He just he does what he's supposed to do, does his job, does it at a high level, um, and, and that's all you can ask for. But you know, right now, before the games really started, there seems to just be that air of comfort where he knows his strengths, understands, you know, some of his weaknesses, but uh, also knows how he can impact the game. That's perfect. Quick and easy for me. Appreciate you. Yeah. We're going to go with Kellen. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Um, yesterday, you know, a bunch of us were just asking the players about their vaccine status, and there was obviously very varying, varying opinions on getting vaccinated. I was just curious, like, with the potential of different protocols in place for, like, vaccinated versus unvaccinated players. How does that impact your job? Like, does it, what challenges does it present, if any? I don't think there's too many other challenges. I mean, we're two years into this. The NBA protocols, um, you know, at times they change, but we're in compliance with that. You know, obviously we have to be in compliance with uh, state and local ordinances, but, uh, you know, I think it's become routine. So I don't see it as a hindrance at all. Um, you know, that's a personal matter. And I think guys will make informed decisions uh, for themselves, but it doesn't really affect us beyond just, uh, you know, what the protocols demand. Thank you. I'm going to go to Neil. Hey, Coach. Uh, one thing on Denny, is he able to take part in full five on fives and everything, or is he still being eased in on that front? Yeah, still being eased in to some degree. Uh, he was a full participant this morning, uh, which is great to see. And a lot of that, you know, was, you know, against coaches. So half speed maybe. Um, but, you know, he looks great. And I think it's just uh, out of the abundance of caution that we're taking our time with him. But he, he looks fantastic. His body looks good. His pace looks great. Uh, so I'm excited to see, you know, once we do kind of ease him into the live segments, how, how that looks. So there wasn't any real five on five done today. I guess what level is not he, this morning? Is he, no, we'll, we'll see tonight. Has, has he done any three on three or anything full speed yet? Or yes, yeah, he's done a lot of the uh, small sided games, the one on one, two on two. Um, he's able to do a lot of that, you know. And I think once again, he's ready. It's just um, upon medical advice that we be cautious with him. And then just generally looking at the roster and the depth, you know, you guys have one through eleven players that. You know, could be in an NBA rotation for you philosophically. Do you have a okay? I like a nine-man rotation to start the season, or do you start out pretty large and then whittle it down? You know, as you get deeper into the season, into the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know part of that too is getting a look at what guys can do in real time. Um, you want to get young guys opportunities early. You know, and yes, you're going to have to live with some youthful mistakes, and at times it, it might be a struggle, but they'll be better for it. You know, throughout the season, if uh, they never get that on court reps, um, it's going to be tough for them to be up to speed when you, you might need those guys later in the year. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Christy. Hey there, Coach. Um, as a coach, I know that you have a, a list of things that you want to get done in practice. How many of those things do you feel that the team really grasped in the first practice today? And how many things get pushed off to the next practice? Well, we got through all of the items we, you know, set forth in implementing this morning. 
the challenge is, you know, was there retention? You know, if we can retain it, come back this evening and apply some of those things. That I think that's the biggest hurdle. Um, and have carryover from practice to practice, um, and obviously down the line, game to game. Um, but time will tell. Uh, right now, you feel pretty good because it's the first day of practice. There's a lot of energy in the gym. Um, guys are talking and communic communicating at a high level. So um, all in all, I'm pleased with how this morning uh, went. We'll see this afternoon, and, and I'm certainly looking forward to some of that uh, carryover. Right. And I was going to ask about the energy and the chatter next. And who stood out in that regard as being that leader for you, that that vocal, communicative player on the court in the first practice? Honestly, it was a lot of guys. I mean, it's tough to really single out one person. You got 18, 19 bodies in the gym. Um, yeah. You know, it's great to see, you know, some of the vets, you know, kind of pull guys aside and, and there were their leadership signs there where they're trying to help some of the younger players navigate some of the drills, understanding some of the nuanced things, um, and also asking a lot of questions because, you know, at times it's not always black and white. Uh, the game is there's a lot of gray area in the game. So uh, getting clarity there. So I, I just love the, the feedback, the focus, uh, obviously the on-court energy, enthusiasm. Um, I was really pleased. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And last question to Christos. Hello, coach. Have a good and healthy season, first of all. Thank you. Uh, my question to you is, you mentioned the depth of uh, your team. So I would like to ask you, what, how talented and how hungry is this group of guys about this season? On the surface, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's, uh, you know, we'll be very competitive. Now, once again, time will tell. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday, um, enjoyed a great meal, but also kind of laid out some expectations internal um, as far as how we see this season unfolding what demands and, and how accountability will be uh, uh, be a big part of that. So it's tough to say, you know, we're going to look a certain way or things going to pan out a certain way. Once we get into the games and, and, and guys will they'll truly show you what they're about. And I think right now they they're on board and uh, that bodes to the enthusiasm, the, you know, the fact that they've been here for three weeks thus far, they put in their time, they put in the energy um, and now they're, we're getting their focus. Um, and it, you hope that carries over into the preseason, obviously the start of this regular season, that's going to be a big thing for us to have that sense of urgency. Um, you know, this team has struggled at times in the past, getting off to good starts. So it's certainly something we, we'd like to change, you know, and make sure we give ourselves a great chance to start the season strong. How was the first day of camp under Coach Unsell? Today was an awesome day. It was very electric, exciting, um, energetic from start to finish. Very attentive to detail. Uh, Coach West has a strong voice about himself. He can very much control a room, uh, which is very impressive. Um, uh, just his principles, and he's very defensive oriented. So our whole first practice today was strictly defense. So uh, he's very much setting the tone for how we need to be and what our focus needs to be on. And it was great. We're very, everybody was locked in. There were no really too many mishaps. Everybody was on page, you know, next group came in, followed up behind, you know, the group in front of them. So it was, uh, it was very free flowing and a lot of continuity today. So it was exciting for the first one. Did you have a chance to interact with Thomas Bryant very much in, in camp? Because we talked to him yesterday and he seemed like kind of a different guy after, after the rehab, you know, a lot more to say. And he say a completely different perspective on, on basketball and what it means in his life. I'm just curious if you've noticed a difference. Uh, a little bit. I've, I've actually hung out with TB a lot over the summer. Uh, we both stay in L.A. and work out there in the summers. And uh, we spend a lot of time, uh, whether it's going to dinner, going to eat, hanging out. Uh, and he's he... He definitely has a new aura about himself. Like granted, he he uh, he had a crazy summer for himself, but uh, individually, like he's he's transitioning his mind to a new place, you know. And uh, I love where he's at. You know, he's very he always has a competitive edge about himself. Uh, I think now just adding Gav, you know, having Tres here, it's, it's kind of motivating him, and he's very itchy to get back out here. We obviously wanted him to take his time, and you know, we understand. I don't, definitely understand how important he is. Uh, to this team. He's one of my favorite guys to play with. So uh, I haven't had much to talk to him during camp, but I, he's definitely over there. He's interactive. He's on the sidelines. He's you see him in the weight room getting his work in, his treatment in. So uh, we want him to take his time for sure. You know, he, we're in no rush for him, uh, we, but we do understand how, how vital and important he is to the team. Hey, Brad, uh, what's the 
like you say that it was about 80-20, like you kind of saw that split. Just how different is that for the first day of the training camp? Like, are you, is training camp always like we're going to install our defense as teams first? Or uh, usually. No, usually, usually, usually coaches do that. Uh, because that's the, that's the most important thing about, uh, you know, every team, you know, you want to be able to establish your defensive principles and who you are and set that precedence early. Uh, when we had our team meeting last night, we actually, I mean, we're one of the best offensive teams in the league. You know, that wasn't a problem. We can score the ball number one in pace. Uh, you know, those issues weren't the problem. It was, you know, can we guard? Can we really guard? Can we get back in transition? Can we rebound the ball? You know, things I'm guilty of as well. So we uh, just having that accountability, um, being better, having that, that set defense, uh, you know, having your identity as a team and just sticking with it, perfecting it. Uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do in exhibition right now. So. I believe you referred to him as a genius defensive league yesterday. Yeah. How do you see that unfold today? What are some examples of uh, I know every time I played Denver, it was always tough. So, and I know he had a lot to do with that. Uh, but just in just the first few days and even, you know, the few weeks before it is just working out here in D.C., he's – He's very vocal, and it's just the small things. Like, it's things we may already know. It's different lingo, different terminology. Um, and there are some some adjustments, too. Like, we did a lot of switching last year. We won't do a lot of that this year, you know. Uh, he's very adamant on, you know, principles, you know, being accountable for your man, being accountable for being a help man, and, uh, and trusting that your teammate will have your back. So uh, there are times we will switch, but I think that a lot of that won't be, won't be this year. That's something you have to kind of retrain yourself not to do that? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's going to be situations. There's going to be emergency situations. You know, he even emphasized that as well. But uh, at the end of the day, you have to take pride in guarding your man in your matchup. And uh, that, and that's what we do. And then you have to take pride in helping your, your teammate too. Uh, I think one of the quotes he says is that you know you have help, but don't depend on your help. You know, don't depend on your help. You know, guard your man. Understand that your teammate has your back, but your main objective is to keep the ball in front of you. Uh, you know, so he, I mean, these are the same things you you hear before, but he he's emphasizing them constantly. So it's been good. Frank, you've been through a couple of different head coaches in your time in the league. Did how you try and connect with and introduce yourself, whatever, a new head coach, did that change this time around now that you're kind of like at a different place in this franchise? Like, how did you approach that? With that? Yeah, I was very reserved, honestly. Uh, I was very reserved because uh, I wanted, it was very, it was unsure of the process. Was, we actually took a, a little minute for it, uh, but we we made the right decision and we got we got a great group of coaches in there. Um, and so at first I was a little I was a little reserved. I wanted you know kind of to let him get acclimated. It's his first time. It's his first time coaching. So I didn't want to just be like, yo, what we're doing? You know, what do you expect from me? What can I do? For, like, no, I I kind of want him to like let it die over. You know, let him get relaxed. And you know, he we reached out to each other. We were actually able to meet in LA a few times, go to eat. He watched me work out, um, play pickup and things like that. So uh, we just slowly developed the bond. And he he was he reminded me of myself. Like he he was very humble. He's very you know uh, encouraging. You know, he just loved the game. And I, and I think we just kind of hit the ground off running from there. First time I talked to him was in Vegas when he got hired. Uh, and just to hear, you know, how he would utilize me, his plans for the team, like that was that was very encouraging, you know, to hear. But uh, more or less, I just kind of sat back and let him let him kind of come to me in a way, and we 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 hit it off strong for sure. This might seem like a, a basketball ignorant question. What does a coach <laughs> learn about you when they're just watching? You play? Is he is he watching for I guess your work ethic or like the way? Oh, uh, could be, could be. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> you probably got to ask coach. Uh, but a lot of the times, I mean, it's probably, you know, what do I work on? Um, obviously, you look at a player's work ethic, but obviously, you know, what does he work on? Does he work on things he'll actually do in the game or does he just, you know, kind of just work, you know? Uh, so I, I've always take pride in doing things I'll do in the game. And uh, even there's even been times here in D.C. He'll just pull me to the side and work me out by myself or just put me through a couple of drills and just offensive schemes that we'll have throughout the year that I'll be involved in and just getting used to that. Uh, Cause it'll be a lot more of me off the ball. I won't be on the ball a lot. I have my opportunities, but he wants me off the ball a lot. So uh, just getting used to that, being a bit, being more of a screener, sometimes a decoy and uh, trusting my teammates to make plays. So the fact that I don't have to do everything and make every play now helps as, as well. Right by the admission of the organization, you guys are right out of town. 
during the, during the playoffs. Um, this first day, could you tell that the talent level has leveled up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. From It's crazy we don't have TB or Rui. It would be that much more competitive. Like, granted, we haven't gone uh, too much live, but you can see it and you can feel it. Like, Trez, Kuz, Pope, they have experience. You know, they're vets. They know what to do. They come in professional. They work their tails off. And they're defenders. Like, they're willing defenders. And so to see them get out, be active, and it just carries over. It just trickles down to everybody. And our young guys are the same way. They're locked in. They're bought in. And uh, and we're getting after. So I'm excited to see this afternoon what it's like. Uh, but it's been it's been really good. Um, I've been impressed so far. But we still obviously we got to put it put it together. When we go live, it'll be some won't be perfect. And then obviously when we get to games and play against other teams, we obviously know it won't be perfect. So it's still a still a work in progress. But I've been I've been solid so far. I definitely feel more encouraged knowing that I can go into battle, knowing I got some dogs behind me. What's kind of simplified? this defensive philosophy with me yesterday when you said that you guys made one stop per quarter. Per quarter. So you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So you could have went from being where you were a year ago. To top 10, top 15. To top 10. So with that being said, as players, can you guys think about that during game? Being like, okay, if we just get one extra stop a quarter, we're a much better defense. Team. For sure. Uh, I mean, that's all about it. That's accountability. You know, um, being able to hold yourself accountable, taking the challenge on defense. Then as a team collectively, uh, we have to come together and push ourselves on that end. Because um, you know, I made a point last night, we communicate a lot off the court as players. Like, it's very easy. You know, we, we hang out, you see us talking. But on the court, it's, sometimes we're mute. Sometimes you don't hear us. Uh, so, like, sometimes you get too cool to talk. You know, you can't be too cool to talk on defense. You know, you have to be vocal. You have to be loud. And it has to be often. So... Uh, I think just having those principles of accountability, communication, and being efficient in everything we do, I think our talent would just propel us to do well, you know, because effort shouldn't be asked of. You know, we have a job to do. We got to go out there and do this job. We get paid to do this job, you know, so effort should always be, that should be a given, you know. Let's be efficient with how we work. Let's get better. Uh, let's actually get something out of what we're doing in practice every day. And then when we come to the game, let's, let's, let's know that what we put into practice is just a direct carryover, you know, so we shouldn't be fearful. We shouldn't be alarmed. You know, we're coming in ready to go confident that we trusted the work we put in for the night. You played with some point guards who can defend, but I feel like it's probably unique to have a whole rotation of point guards with reputations for their defense, mm -hmm. Henry, Meadow, and Holiday. Uh, what, what can that do for you as the two guard alongside? Push me to guard better. Honestly, because uh, I know I can be better. Uh, I have to be better, uh, and I can't. I can't just say we got we got better defenders. I can just take a break. No, I have to push myself and uh, and be a lot better defender. Take some of those challenges, and uh, and help guys out. You know, there are times I I try to do that, but it's definitely helpful knowing that we have a bunch of guys who want to take that challenge. So I'm pretty sure on the sideline you see a lot of arguing over who wants to guard who. But I think that's a great thing, great thing to have, for sure. And if we could just get your take on uh, Rue Hutchmer not being here, obviously it was a, a really important piece to the team. Mm -hmm. and we don't know. Yeah, uh, Rue is important. We all know that. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, we we don't get too, you know, into detail about it or too involved. Uh, we respect everybody's, you know, decision and everybody's, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, and we want what's best for him. We want him to take his time deal with, you know, whatever he's dealing with and make sure he deals with it wholeheartedly. You know, he doesn't come back till he's ready. I mean, you have to understand that this is it's a tough time for everybody in this world, honestly, you know, and uh, so we have a we have a very special heart, soft heart for Rui. Uh, we want him to take care of his family, whatever the case may be, take care of himself um, and get back as soon as he can because we know he's talented. We love him. We miss him. He's a huge part to our team. So we want him back, but take his time for sure. May I again address the elephant in the room? Sure. Uh, I've known you a long time. You're a thoughtful guy. You think about things. You look into things. You don't speak off half cocked. Right. So if the why about your vaccination status is private, is the how also private? Like, how do you come to your decision? Uh, I don't know. 
it's weird. So when I stated yesterday, like I've, I've I believe what I say. It's my opinion. Uh, the why is is personal, um, but also along those lines, I also said that I'm still considering getting the vaccine. So one thing I want to get clear is that I'm not sitting up here advocating or campaigning that, no, you should not get that vaccine. I'm not doing that. I'm not sitting up here doing that. Not sitting up here doing that. I want to get that straight. I am not sitting up here saying vaccines are bad. I'm not sitting up here saying that this vaccine is bad. I'm not sitting up here saying that you shouldn't get it. It is a personal decision between every individual. That's it. Right? And I have that personal right to keep it to myself and keep it between my family. And I would like everybody to respect that. Now, how I came about that, I honestly can't get the vaccine because I just cleared my 60 days of having COVID. So according to laws and rules that were put into place, I wouldn't be able to get, I still wouldn't be vaccinated right now, regardless, because I just got over COVID. So it is still a process ongoing in my family and I, and trust and believe we have some of the best team docs and doctors in the world here in DC that constantly educate me and that continue to give me and give me the answers of questions that I constantly have. And so I'm gonna to continue to ask those questions. And when I feel confident and ready with the results and the answers I get, I'll handle them accordingly. But uh, the how, I don't, it's just not necessarily anything that happened. Uh, it's uh, it's really more or less my opinion. You mentioned in other places mentioned the opaquity of it that there's pressure to get the vaccine, and I wonder if that's you feel that's coming from any particular place. Is it coming from your peers, from the league, from family, from friends, from or all of the above? Uh, I don't necessarily feel like it's pressure. Me personally. Uh, I know for sure our organization doesn't pressure me. Um, they definitely, we have conversations. We have conversations about it all the time. We talk about it every day. Um, so it's not like a, yo, Brad, what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to get, it's not, it's not like that. It, it is not that at all. Uh, you know, we're very professional. We're very open-hearted and, uh, and we keep it, we keep it that way. You know, um, I, I can't speak for everybody when they feel like they're being pressured or anything like that. Like the league has rules in place for those who are vaccinated and those for those who aren't vaccinated to keep everybody safe, keep everybody, you know, at bay. So uh, I would just respect those things and go according to those rules and regulations until, you know, those, my decision changes, which is still possible. Like we, I'm not sitting here saying that I won't get it. Okay, let's just get that out there. All right, we're gonna to go to Zoom for two questions. We're gonna start with Christy and then end with Kareem. Hey, Brad, um, with regards to what you said about not having to make every play and how that's been freeing for you, coach said that there was a lot of communicative energy on the floor today as well with the vets. Does that free you up in that regard as well? Uh, for sure. Um... Because I made a I made a point last night to the team, you know, this isn't just my team. This isn't just about me. I don't. Yes, I'm a franchise player. Yes, I've been here ten years, but I don't operate like that. This isn't, you know, Brad's telling you to do this. Let's do this. Like we don't. I'm. I don't want to operate like that. I like to be held accountable for actions too. You know, so if I'm not doing something, I'm not doing my job. You have every right to criticize me, get on my head, make sure I'm doing the right thing, cuss me out, whatever. I can take it. You know, and that's how I want our whole team to be. So if we have vets, we have vets who have won rings. I haven't won a ring. So I don't know what that sacrifice is like. I don't know what it takes to get to that level. So I rely on you guys for your expertise and your your leadership and your veteran experience in that category because I don't have it, you know. Uh, so I just play the cards that I have and that from the vet, the many vets in, that I had growing up and throughout my career, I just I take what I've learned from them and, and implement it now, you know, and uh, Coach West, he made a point of emphasis. He wants me to be a lot more vocal this year uh, with my leadership. So uh, I've, I've accepted that challenge and uh, I'm definitely excited that he's trusted me in that, in that regard. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And with how today's practice went, a lot of breakdown stuff, you said a lot of defense. What are you most looking forward to when you take it 5v5 later today? Uh, 
can we keep that same focus and discipline? Because it's very easy to do it, you know, unscripted against five no against coaches. Um, but, you know, when the game's fast, pace is fast, shot clock is up, you know, can you keep that same focus and discipline? Can you execute your plays? Can you remember the plays? You know, the, uh, all those things are key. And coach will be looking for those things uh, out of us this afternoon for sure. So, uh, yeah, that'll be it. And we got to make sure we're physical and locked and locked in, ready to go. Because he doesn't want to over, he doesn't want to keep teaching. That's what, that's been the point he said. He don't want to have to keep teaching. So uh, we got to make sure we're locked in and, and do what he do what he wants us to do. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And last question to Kareem. Hey, Brad, Kareem from the Washington Post. Quick one for you. Um, I want to ask about Daniel. Yesterday, you spent a lot of time talking about his offseason approach, and and he seems like a pretty confident, motivated, hungry guy right now. I'm just curious, what changes or what progression have you seen from him from the time to he got here to where he is today and just his approach to the game? You said gaffer, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gav, is, Gav has been a godsend, man, ever since we got him. You know, he has truly helped us out on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, his rim presence, his ability to catch lobs, his ability to catch, period. Um, and then his ability to be able to catch lobs, rebound the ball, block shots, alter defenses. Like it's uh it's amazing, you know, and then that was nothing but confidence for him, you know, from a situation he had in Chicago to where he wasn't probably playing like he should have been. And now, you know, he's coming to an organization that just thrusted him out there, you know, and he enjoyed every moment of it. He had highs, he had lows, but he embraced them all and he understood that that's what was was making him better. Um, so he just took that into the off season, took it, uh, took it on strong and got stronger, uh, got a lot bigger up top. His legs are already like tree trunks. Um, you know, he's a naturally gifted athlete, you know, and so his, his constant understanding of the game is just getting better and better. His touch around the rim is better. He's developing a nice little 15 footer. Uh, so he, he, I'm proud of him and Alex McClain for their work this summer. Uh, they really were dialed in and got in the lab and got it done. So. I'm, I'm very happy for him. It's a big year for him. Uh, you know, it's a very big year for him. He's trying to, he's trying to get that money. So, you know, we're going to do all we can to help him do that, for sure. What were your first impressions of uh, Wes Hunsell Jr. today? I, I understand there was a lot of defense. Mm -hmm. You said it was 80-20 against yeah. the offense. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it was great. You know, he had, he had a lot of great energy this morning, for sure. He got everybody fired up, got everybody ready to work. So that's just the main thing. I mean, I like him a lot. You know, I like him as a coach. I like him as a person in general, too. And I mean, I really just can't wait for, you know, the season to come around, you know, um, because obviously he really wants to win. And just keeping everybody, you know, intact and, you know, accumulated with, you know, what we want to do here with the Wizards and stuff, having an 80-20 defense today. Like, defense is the main focus, I'm pretty sure, with him. So, I mean, it's a great thing. No, I loved it a lot. <laughs> and uh, Brad said uh, what stood out to him was just the, the veteran mindset of guys mm -hmm. like KCP and uh, Trez and Coos in particular. Um, kind of what did you see from them as a, as a young player? Um, just really just the professionalism that they have, you know, for them being in the league for so long, certain things like that, just having that standpoint throughout their, um, facility and stuff, just seeing guys, you know, of their character, of their type of player that they are just being in the gym and just really, you know, locking in and working, just getting down to the nit and gritty and just grinding. That's a, it's a real big thing for me because, you know, I want to be in that same spot sooner or later throughout my career. So I can learn a lot from them and I just can't wait for them. I know you're obviously still finding out your roles and stuff like as you go along, but I wonder as like just a center, how you go about, um, what do you think your responsibilities are for setting that defensive tone? Um, main thing is protecting home, you know, just making sure nobody gets easy shots on the inside. It's the main thing, keeping basically trying to keep people out of the paint as much as possible, you know, it's just uh, one of the two main points that, really stand out to me other than that, you know, just making sure, you know, my guy doesn't score too much. And Wes was saying that he hasn't really had a player like you defensively before that he had a lot of different mm -hmm. things and be able to play like just where do you find that versatility showing up on defense? Like what are some things that you can do defensively that are helpful? Um, you know, what I'm working on now is just being able to guard every position. You know, it's tough 
just being, you know, a guy of my link, certain things like that, being able, just like in any situation, if I would have to switch on a guard, you know, just trying to keep a guard, you know, maintain, make sure they don't spoil or get an easy basket or anything like that. That's just a main thing that I've worked on. But in general, just having a defensive mindset first and offensive mindset second, you know, I have my offensive game and I have things that I've worked on, but, you know, I'm not going to be able to, not going to be able to show that most of the time if, you know, we can score it on here and there all the time. So I just got to make sure that I prevent the stuff that we don't want inside the paint. That's my main thing. Did, did the playoffs help with that? Particularly like for the majority Yeah, for sure. Because I got a, I got a real good glimpse of like having a guard out of my position. You know, I had the guard Ben Simmons. That's the main, like, that was just like the main take out of the playoffs for me. Because when Joel went down, I mean, it was tough, it was tough on him, but I mean, it was, it was good for us. You know, um, just being in that position and having to be able to, like, expand my defensive range instead of just being in the paint, having to got back me down and certain things like that. So being out on the perimeter of guard, like Ben Simmons and certain times switch on, like, Seth Curry, certain things like that, it really helped me out a lot, showed me where I can, like, excel my game to to be able to be one of the, you know, you know dominant bigs in the league. Really just the main thing that I feel like we did a lot was pick and roll defense, you know, focusing on, you know, the terms that we call out when a big is going to set a screen for a guard. If, um, you know, the screen is like outside of the paint or anything like that, outside of that range, you know, elbow extended to like the sideline is um, we're um, sending him down you know, using the sideline as a third defender. Those are the main things. Like, I feel like pick and roll was the main thing that he emphasized. Transition was another one, and just really just protecting the basket was also the third point. So those were the three main keys that I took out of today. You were obviously part of that weird kind of center rotation last year, Danny Lincoln. I think how, and you talked to us a lot about your mindset yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, how did that change for you coming in, hearing GM say, yeah, day one, you're our starter? Oh, uh, I mean – you know, it's all in the day's work at this point. Like I told you, like I told you guys in the last media thing that I had, you know, I really didn't just really didn't care about starting. You know, I'm grateful for the position that I've been put in. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I just want to be out there on the floor with my team. That's the main thing. What were some of the priorities that you and Alex had this offseason to get you where you want to be going to camp this season? Really just being in the gym as much as I could you know, working around his schedule and working around mine as well. And then just mainly focusing on, you know, being able to be more of a threat on offense, you know, because if I'm pretty much, if anybody like reads up an article on me or anything, talking about my strengths and weaknesses, one of my weaknesses is like, you know, just being a lob threat. That's the main thing. So I don't just want to be a lob threat. You know, I'm still a lob threat. I still got bounce more than anybody. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> put me in the dunk contest. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But other than that, um, just, you know, I want to be more than just, you know, pick and roll guy, catching lobs, anything like that. I want to be able to, like, provide to the team, you know, more of a threat on offense to, like, take pressure off anybody else that's, like, on the floor with me. Like, you know, Spencer, Brad, anybody that's out there on the floor, just take pressure off those guys and be able to give them, you know, a break. You know, every now and then down on offense, if they throw it down to the low post, they can trust me to be able to make that move and get that basket. Let me ask you about the, the art of shot block. It's one thing to throw everything that comes into the paint. You just want to, but mm -hmm. it's also maybe redirecting and giving people a, a second thought of doing it. How do you find the balance between, you know, I want to make a highlight play on the defensive mm -hmm. end or I want to make the right play to kind of get us in transition? Well, it really is just making sure I stay on the floor because as everybody has seen, I stay in foul trouble a lot. You know, I'm like a foul magnet. So I try to just mainly make sure I don't do anything that gets me off the floor early. You know, whether it's altering a shot, anything like that, I always go talk to the ref whenever I get a foul. If like I swipe down on a block or anything like that, or if I come down and I ask like, how can I, um, how can I be in a position to where I don't get that foul? And that helps me a lot too. So just the main thing is, it's just making sure I stay on the floor and making sure I don't, you know, foul have three fouls in like the first five minutes I'm out there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bit of a random question, but it's for a story I'm working on. Okay. Uh, Thomas Bryant has got kind of a reputation for uh, being like very vocal and very animated on the bench. Mm -hmm. And you were kind of you were on the team right when kind of he 
was able to keep going the team and be on the bench. Did right. you notice that last year? Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Did it stand out to you, you know, compared to other teammates that had in the past? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, just having vocal guys on the sideline is something that I always notice because, I mean, it brings juice to the team than when you're not even on the floor. I mean, he's out there in street clothes and stuff, and he's still, you know, accumulated with the game. He's still, like, interested. He's still active, you know, on the sideline. And it helps out a lot because, you know, you got guys that are probably down on themselves when they're coming to the bench and stuff. And there's TB right there. First person is telling you it's all good. You know, keep shooting that shot or it's going to be okay. No, certain things like that. So I always, I always notice little things like that because it's the small things that helps us. And I believe in the past you described yourself as an introvert. Mm -hmm. um, does that type of, uh, I guess, uh, behavior from the teammates, is that, is that, can teammates kind of fire you up in that way? Yeah, for sure. Any introvert comment that I make, that's for off the court me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if it's anything on the court, then I'm a completely different person. Like right now, it's, you know, just me being me. I've come a long way with just, you know, how much of, like, I talk. You know, I feel like I talk too much now, <laughs> for sure. But it was at one point in time in my life where I didn't say a word. Like, I'd be up there, I'd say, like, three words, and then I'd be done with the, I'd be done with the question. <laughs> All right, we're going to go over, the, over to Zoom now. Uh, let's start off with Kareem. Hey, what's up, Daniel? Kareem from the Washington Post. Quickie, um, yesterday, you know, you talked so much about your offseason approach and motivations and things like that. And I'm just curious, how much was this offseason different uh, than your previous? And, and kind of what was the really thing that kind of clicked in your head that said, hey, I got to take a different approach this time? I mean, I took more responsibility for how better I wanted to be. You know, in the last past off seasons, you know, there was times where I was in the gym and all that, but I still had like kind of like a kid mindset, you know, I always wanted to be in the house, just relaxing and everything. But I mean, I can't get better if I'm doing that. You know, I, I wanted to be in the gym every day because me being in the gym every day, I feel like I'll get better um, as the time goes by instead of just going every other day or going like every day and then two days in between. So certain things like that. So, I mean, I just, you know, really just locked in and put, you know, a real big standpoint on just like I wanted to be better and I wanted to come into the season and be able to help my team more. And just one more for me, you you mentioned also yesterday, you know, that that at the trade, you know, it kind of got you out of a dark place. And I was just curious, was that just stemming from, you know, not being as productive on the floor as, you know, you wanted to be or or, or was there just kind of other factors to that also? Uh, it was just really just me in my own head because I didn't really just come out and play like I needed to play, you know, um, when I was in Chicago, Billy Donovan had, he told me that my role was a pick and roll dominant guy. He had me playing in the pocket, certain things like that, playing out of the pocket. And I wasn't, I didn't set that standard. I, I didn't meet his standard. So I felt like that I came out and I took it for granted of the position that I was in when I was in Chicago. I took a lot of opportunities that he gave me. I felt like I took that for granted. So whenever I got traded, it was, it was another door that opened for me because I'm in a whole different atmosphere and I, my basically my slate is clean. So I came in and pretty much just locked in on the things that I really need to get better at. And I really didn't just like dwell on it too much because I have another chance to get better at it with a whole different team and a whole other staff. That's perfect. Appreciate you. All right, let's go over to uh, Quentin. What's good, Daniel? Yo, what's up? Uh, Number one question, we saw you working a lot on that jump shot this offseason with Alex. Uh, can you kind of maybe pinpoint um, the technical side of improving your jump shot, especially at your size and what you guys focused on? Mm, um, really, it was just my form, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because when we had came and played Washington when I was in Chicago at the beginning of the season last season, we had, we had footage of when I shot my free throw. And mm -hmm. when I shot my free throw, the ball was like at the top of my forehead. <laughs> like it went back and I was like right here when I was shooting. So yeah. he's helped me change my form up a bit. And it's really just helped me, you know, create a lot more offense throughout like anything with helping me with my jump shot for sure. 
you know. Um, but that's just pretty much the main thing. We really focused on changing the form and changing like how comfortable I was with that form. And it took it took a it took a bit of time, you know. It took a little bit for me to get used to. But I mean, I'm, I'm I can't even talk. I'm a quick learner. So um, when it came to it, I really locked in and focused because, like I said, I wanted to get better. I wanted to be able to come and produce for my team. I wanted to be a bigger target on offense, you know, so to speak. So that was just the main thing that we really like focused on and just like, you know, face up game, anything that would help me be more comfortable, like with my skill set for sure. And also a quick follow up from something Spencer said yesterday. Can you guard Spencer Dinwiddie? Um, I ain't, <laughs> ain't going to lie. Like in like one of the pickup games, I grabbed Spencer stuff off the glass, but that y'all didn't hear that from me. You know, y'all didn't hear that from me. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go over to Neil now. Hey, Daniel, um, you've talked a lot about, you know, coming here and how that's, you know, been a change for you. Brad just kind of described it as a godsend, um, mm -hmm. you know, you coming over. Do they tell you that, uh, you know, to your face? And if so, like, how much does that mean to you that, and just what does that do for your confidence? And does that motivate you even more? I mean, it does a lot for my confidence, but nobody has told me that to my face yet. <laughs> you know, um, even if they did, I probably would tell them not to because that's so cringe. <laughs> but um, other than that, the only thing that I really would just like hear guys talk about is just like like today. I um, I did a windmill today, like in the practice and stuff, and everybody was on the sideline. It was like, oh my god, stuff like that. I was like, man, yeah, that fe that feels good. You know, when I hear them on the side, I talk about it. If they come face to face, that, that might make it awkward for me. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> But it means a lot, you know, just having guys on the team just really just kind of like lift me up and certain things like that when it comes to just like the ability of like me jumping or blocking shots or even, you know, shooting or anything like that. So, And it might be, you know, too early to really assess before you guys really get into things. But, you know, last season you were always around, you know, the 20-ish minutes range. Um, where do you see in the work that you've done this offseason with your conditioning? Do you think you could do 30 minutes a game or do you have a sense of that yet? Um, I don't know. We're just going to see when we get there. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And last question over to Christos. Hello, Danny. How are you? Oh, good. Great. Uh, I would like to ask you, how better player do you feel the, ahead of this season? Say that one more time. How better player do you feel right now ahead of this season? I feel like I've progressed a good amount for sure. A good amount to where I'm comfortable for um, this season. But I mean, you know, I really don't take breaks anymore. You know, like, like you know, the old me, you know, I get to this position and I would kind of slack off. But now, you know, that I'm in this position and I'm in, you know, a state of mind to where like my confidence is better than what it used to be. Like, I just can't take no days off. I want to get better as the days go by, whether it's me having to work out more during the season, work out more during the off season, anything like that. But I have took a big step in like my game for sure. And in my confidence as well. So those are the two major things that I've like gotten better with. And to follow up from your perspective, how, what is the ceiling of that group uh, pot talent and potential wise? Say that one more time. You like going in and out. Yeah. Uh, about the, 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 that group of guys, what is the ceiling of that group? talent and potential wise for this season? I mean, the sky is the limit, you know, it hasn't started yet, um, but day in, day out, we're working. So, you know, we're working on our craft, we're working on our chemistry, we're working on a lot of things. So, I mean, the sky is the limit for us for sure.